This video is eight minutes long. But how long does it actually feel? Time moves forward at a constant rate and we aren't able to influence it. So six minutes should always be six minutes. But your perception of time, well, that might not be so constant. If you've ever read a good book or played a great game, you may have felt that time just flew by. Or if you've been stuck at work and working on an assignment, time can really drag on. And many people report that as they grow older, time seems to move faster. But if time is constant, how can time change? You used to come here a lot as a kid, right? To the islands. I mean, I mean, that's what Ren... Uh, do you ever get deja vu? I feel like... Like, didn't we just walk through here? Huh. That's funny. I, I don't think we have. I think the first thing to realize is that your perception of time, what you actually experience, is not a direct measurement of time itself. It's created internally, and so it should be subjected to manipulation and changes. But that perception must come from somewhere, so what's driving it? You might be familiar with circadian rhythms as your internal clock. More specifically, circadian rhythms refer to the physiological changes that occur throughout the day and help regulate your wakeful and restful states. This is done through vision and changes in brightness levels throughout the day. Before the inventions of electricity and fire, measuring the pastor's time by brightness worked out just fine. But as I'm sure you can imagine, with current technology, things can be easily changed and screwed up. But there has to be more to your perception of time than just how bright it is because, well, Clearly, we can still measure intervals of time despite changes in brightness. A tried and well-tested phenomenon in psychology is that time perception is influenced by our cognitive processing. If your brain is busy processing something, then our estimate for that interval of time changes. The key factor here is attention. The main idea is that you have some limited pool of attentional resources available in your brain, and so if you attend to one task, it reduces your attention to time. For example, a study in 2009 ran an experiment where participants anticipated the occurrence of some break in a continuous tone, and then reported the duration of the tone. The longer participants spent anticipating the break, the more attention would be directed towards the arrival of the break, and less on the passage of time. So participants actually report shorter times when the break took a long time to get there. Generally, the more you attend to time, the longer you perceive. And the more distracted you are from time, the shorter you perceive. This finding is pretty intuitive because it matches at least what I have experienced anecdotally, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video. There is also a lot of interaction between time perception and your senses like vision or audition. Speech and music are very temporal things. They occur over time and have an internal rhythm, so maybe they inform our sense of the passage of time in some way. Your perception of time can be influenced by various factors and is really dependent on whatever your brain is busy processing. This gives you a pretty clear prediction for how players in a video game will perceive the passage of time. If a game has you doing repetitive tasks without much demand on thought or planning or attention, there will be more resources available to focus on how much time is passing, and it should feel like things are moving pretty slowly. Compare that to a game that has a constant demand for attention, something that involves many unique decisions to make in a steady stream of planning and input. All of this will draw your attention away from time and should be perceived as taking much less time. Or in other words, time will fly by. Actually, Overwatch is an interesting example because every time you die, you are forced to wait around 10 seconds until you respawn. So you go from an environment where attention is drawn away from time to waiting with all your attention on time. Those respawn waits should really feel disproportionately long. But here's a counter argument to this idea of time and attention. Sometimes, in the heat of a moment, when all your attention is surely drawn away from time, can't a short period of time feel like an eternity? How can we reconcile that? I don't know. Probably the story isn't as simple as I'm laying out. Or maybe in those moments we really are focused on the passage of time and don't really realize it. Also, this isn't to say that video games without a constant stream of decisions to make are more or less fun. Just because something feels like it takes a long time doesn't mean you're having less fun. But it is worth considering that the factors that would increase perceived time duration are probably shared with the reason something isn't fun. But this all doesn't quite answer our original question. How do our brains perceive time? And to figure that out, we need to start thinking about cognitive models. Time, time, time is a gift, fleeting and swift, ticking and talking itself away, itself away, I'm saying better be worth. Time is a gift, 
A cognitive model is a theoretical system or mechanism that tries to outline how information might be processed in the brain. They aren't necessarily made to match one-to-one -one with actual functions and connections in the brain. Most of the time, we don't have that information yet. Rather, we come up with these models that could explain how something is done, find evidence for it by testing predictions of the model in human or animal studies, and then explore to see if we can find some direct biological basis. For time perception, there are a few possible mechanisms. The most intuitive explanation is that we have some sort of internal clock. We may have a way of measuring the passage of time, at least indirectly, that leads to what we perceive. One model for this internal clock could be a pacemaker. Basically, there might be somewhere in our brain that can effectively emit pulses at a set rate, and the number of pulses you measure in an interval determines how much time has passed. We could also have some sort of oscillator that takes advantage of our naturally rhythmic environment to track time. One clear example of this is our ability of entrainment. Put simply, entrainment is your ability to keep a beat. Humans are musical creatures. We are uniquely capable of accurately keeping in time with complex rhythms and beats. We can anticipate the beat in a song and are very sensitive to any variations or hiccups in that beat. So which model gives us our perception of time? I don't know. I don't think we're at the stage of answering that question yet. It could be one model, it could be a combination of different models. This is also only a small part of the story. Time perception and cognition is a huge subject, so be aware that I'm summarizing quite a bit here. But I did mention that sometimes you can find biological evidence from models, so let's talk about your brain. Run out of time, then where does it go? Is time even real? Does anyone know? Maybe time's just a construct of human perception, an illusion created by... <laughs> the most promising candidate location for a pacemaker seems to be in your cerebellum, located at the very bottom of your brain, right before your brainstem. The cerebellum is an ancient brain structure and is shared with all vertebrate animals. It's important in a lot of things, but particularly with modulating motor movement. It can detect errors between intended movements and actual movements and help correct that. It's also related in speech production and perception, and there is evidence that it's involved in perceiving intervals of time. Neural imaging studies have revealed that the cerebellum could provide coding for long intervals between 12 seconds to 24 seconds, and lesions in the cerebellum impair ability to discriminate intervals of time. Your frontal cortex also seems to be involved, specifically the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, which is located right about here. This seems to be involved in short intervals, less than a second. This is useful because this brain area is located around the surface of your brain, so it should be accessible with tools like EEG, which is way cheaper than MRI machines. And finally, the basal ganglia. This little guy is located in the center of your brain, and it's a pretty important structure. It's involved in coordinating motor movements, learning, and emotions. In terms of time perception, it might be involved early on in encoding time intervals from either external stimuli or internal clocks before sending the information off to other brain areas. The basal ganglia is also crucially important for rhythm perception and entrainment, so that finding kind of makes sense. I think it's clear now how subjective your sense of time is. You only ever experience a representation of reality, stitched together by all the different processes in your brain trying to make sense of everything. Time itself doesn't change, but as for how fast that feels, that's up to your brain to decide.